Hi guys, so today I thought I'd give you a list of possibly the top five things that might pose a cultural shock when visiting Rwanda from the West. Now obviously I'm British so I can only really explain it from a British perspective but talking to many of my friends from around the world, from different countries, these are some things that I think we all find in common when we first move here or visit. Now, my intention with this is not to bring anybody down. It's just to give a heads up to people who might be visiting, because I think to be pre-warned helps us to adjust a little bit more easily. And I am going to do another video soon about the best things about living in Rwanda, because there are so many. It's an incredibly beautiful country, and the pace of life here is really nice. So I'm going to talk about that at a later date. But for today, I just wanted to run through some of the kind of complicated points that you might encounter when you first arrive. And also a quick non-sponsored plug here. If you're interested in hearing about what it's like for somebody who moved from this region to the West, I highly, highly recommend my friend Henry Nyakarandi's book, My African Dream, because he moved to America from Burundi when he was um, in his early 20s, I think, and he spent 18 years living in America. And this book, it's funny, it's entertaining, it's a really nice short read, and it tells you a bit about the culture shock that he experienced moving from over here to over there. So the opposite of what I'm just about to talk about. And it's really interesting sometimes to have both perspectives. So without further ado, let's go. So number one on my list is a fairly mild one. In Rwanda, it's considered very rude to eat whilst walking. If you want to eat, go to a cafe or a restaurant. Now, I know this isn't specific to Rwanda, as I've seen a lot of YouTubers in Japan saying the same thing. The difference is that Japan has got a thriving street food culture, whereas Rwanda doesn't. There are a few theories for this. The first is that in a country with traditionally very high poverty rates, it's distasteful to walk down the street eating when others can't afford to. Another oft-repeated phrase is that street food is unhygienic because it attracts roaches and rodents. And a slightly more cynical take is that it's hard to keep track of street vendors for tax purposes, although many other countries manage to license them just fine. It's worth knowing this before you arrive, because in countries like the UK, it's normal to eat on the go. Grab your coffee and a sandwich and wolf it down on the way to work. If you try that here, people probably won't say anything, but it is considered really impolite. Number two is staring. This is something visitors to Rwanda tend to notice very quickly. Cultural shock number one, staring. Rwandans love to stare. They will stare at you if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're tall, if you're ugly, if you're handsome, if you're short, if you're male or female, or anything in between. This is something that I've never seen anywhere else in the world. You might be asking yourself, why do they stare so much then? Other than just curiosity, I don't think they're even aware that they stare so much. In the UK, you're brought up from a very early age to believe that staring is rude. As a child, your parents constantly tell you to stop staring. Being stared at usually makes Westerners feel extremely uncomfortable. But in Rwanda, that inhibition doesn't exist. People will openly stare at anything or anyone that catches their attention. And often it's a really hard stare, which can come across as cold or aggressive to visitors. However, nine times out of ten, if you smile and say hello, the person staring will burst into a bright smile and the tension lifts. I'm someone who lives in my own little bubble, and over the years, I've just learnt to block this out. But when I meet people who have just arrived in the country, they often comment on it. Next up is the word muzungu, which is the Bantu word for traveller or foreigner. Some people think it's used to mean white person, but it's liberally applied to anyone of any colour from any country that isn't here. You don't tend to hear this so much in Kigali anymore. But step off the tarmac and swarms of kids and the occasional adult will point at you and loudly exclaim, Mazungu! 
It's so frequent that you can even buy novelty t-shirts with the slogan, my name is not Mazungu. Whereas it's funny the first few times, it quickly wears thin. It would be the equivalent of walking down a street in England and someone following behind shouting, foreigner, foreigner, oi, foreigner. After a while, it can really seep into your psyche. You might be sitting in a cafe, on a bus, or walking down the road, and hear conversations peppered with a liberal sprinkling of Mazungu, Mazungu, Mazungu. Now, they might be talking about you, or they might be talking about another Mazungu, or they could be discussing their friend Kazungu. But if you don't speak fluent Kinyarwanda, it's easy to get a bit paranoid and start to take it personally. As with staring, try not to dwell on it. Focus on the rest of your day and just carry on. Next up is the time continuum. This can get particularly irksome if you're visiting for business meetings or conferences. In most of the West, we're pretty strict about punctuality. If we set a time for a meeting, we expect that meeting to take place at exactly that time. That's rarely the case in most of Africa and many non-English speaking countries. Although this phenomenon of late arrival is often termed African time, I've worked in other countries such as Armenia and can attest that it happens there too. What it boils down to is monochronic and polychronic time differences. Most English speaking countries work on monochronic time which means we set our to-do list for the day and work through this list one item at a time, in a chronological order, until we get to the end. That's why we get so annoyed if plans suddenly change and people are late, because we panic that we won't get through everything. In contrast, many other cultures work on polychronic time. As my Congolese friend Lambert put it, I know the day is long, and I will get to do everything I need to do before it ends. People working on polychronic time will happily walk into a meeting, walk out of a meeting, answer the phone at the same time they're speaking to you, and do a hundred other things at once. With polychronic time, the general rule is that the person you're speaking to at that moment is the most important person. Whereas for Westerners, the person we're going to meet is often the most important person, and we mustn't keep them waiting. Now, it's all very well knowing the reasoning behind these differences but the reality of living it will drive you up the wall. Westerners will continue to get angry when people don't show up on time, and Africans will continue to feel very stressed when people expect them to be on time all the time. This is one of those cultural differences that is extremely hard to balance, and there is no easy answer. You just have to try and make your peace with it in whatever way works. Finally, attitudes to noise. This is one that I personally struggle with constantly, even after so long living here. I mentioned in my video about my house that most houses aren't built to withstand noise. There are literally holes from the inside of the house to the outside, with no double glazing or insulation. This helps to keep houses cool, but it also means that if someone's talking on the street outside, you can probably follow the conversation. But the other aspect to this is a straight-up cultural difference. In Western countries, we tend to think of our preference in music as being something very individual and personal to us. Maybe you like classical music, opera, jazz, or maybe you like Kerrang, death metal, or rock and roll. Music is an expression of your personality, and we tend to think of it as rude to inflict your personal taste in music on others without their express permission. If you're sitting on a train or a bus playing music too loudly through your headphones, you're likely to get some dirty looks. In contrast, grocery shops, bars, and even people walking down the street with a radio in Rwanda tend to consider it a public service to crank the volume right up. So guys, right behind me is where we went and did our shopping from, as you can see. So that is our small uh, market here. It's our trading center, guys. It's a bit noisy, as you can hear. So I'm sorry, in case you're not getting me well, I'm really, really sorry for today. It's a bit noisy here yeah, because I'm not home, yeah? I hope you understand. I really, really wanted to show you what our market looks like. As you can hear, the noise is coming from behind here. Yeah, it's a burning center, like they burn music from there, so it's noisy like that. Then right behind me there is a Boda Boda stage. Whether it's a local football match or thumping bass, the louder it is, the better it is. 
because the more people can enjoy it. Combine this with the lack of soundproofing in houses, and it's a difficult one for many Westerners to cope with long term. It also ties in a bit with polychronic time, as people tend to turn up the volume whenever they want to listen, whether that's four o'clock in the afternoon or four o'clock in the morning. Even road building and construction work can go on all night long. Now, of course, noisy neighbours exist in the West, and Kigali does have noise regulations in place if people want to complain. But there is a definite difference in the cultural attitude towards noise and what is acceptable. So those are five of the top cultural differences that I tend to notice on a regular basis. If you've just moved to Rwanda from another country, let me know what stood out for you in the comments below. And if you've just moved from Rwanda to another part of the world, where did you move to and what has taken the most adjusting to? If you've found this video in any way helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing.